guys, what's up? It's Vanessa and welcome back to another What's For Dinner. You guys, it has been a hot minute, but I have four recipes that I cannot wait to share with you guys today. When you pray to find love, I know somewhere we could be. There's a place where we can go tonight. The rhythm make it. All right. For the first one, I thought I'd start with the favorite of the week, which was one pot pizza rigatoni. I shared this with you guys on Instagram and you begged to see the recipe. So here it is. I will link it down below. It is a Pinterest recipe, you guys. And the only thing I can say is Jamie said it tastes like an elevated Chef Boyardee. And in my house, that's a compliment because we love Chef Boyardee. Like I said, it will be linked down below, but the very first thing I'm doing is I'm using my Dutch oven and I'm browning about a pound and a half of ground beef and I'm literally just using Italian seasoning, salt and pepper. I'm not even sure Italian seasoning is in the recipe, but I just can't cook pasta sauce without adding it to my ground beef. Next up, I'm shredding up some fresh mozzarella cheese. You guys, I have raved about this in previous What's For Dinners. If I think of it, I will link it below, but there are tons of variations on Amazon of this cheese grater. Now in the recipe, it does say not to cook your ground beef all the way and to add the pepperoni right away when you're cooking your ground beef. So I guess I strayed a little bit from the recipe. So all I'm doing here, it requires a cup of pepperoni. You take half of it, cut it in half, stir it in with your ground beef. Here I am straying from the recipe, adding Parmesan cheese. Now the recipe calls for a jar of marinara sauce, a box of rigatoni, and about three cups of water. I ended up adding around an extra half a cup of water just because I didn't think it was enough. And I will say there was a moment when I thought it was too much, but it was just enough, you guys. Then we're gonna go ahead and top it with two cups of shredded mozzarella, finish it off with that half a cup of pepperoni, and broil it, and you guys, just wait and see. Cause I just wanna call my friends and see what they're doing tonight It doesn't have to be so special I try to be myself, you do the same and we'll be alright I did check on it three or four times just to stir it because my Dutch oven tends to stick and I just wanted to make sure the pasta was submerged. I'm also gonna throw in some Costco garlic bread, you guys, and this is gonna be a super simple meal all in one pot and like this is a real one pot meal do you know what i mean if you don't have a dutch oven then you could certainly transfer this to a 9 by 13 and bake it in the oven that way but for me i'm all about minimizing the dishes you guys and plus frankly when this broils in the oven you're gonna see it's just pretty and you're gonna see i keep a very close eye on it say is it was the perfect amount of sauce, the perfect doneness. I let this sit for about 15 minutes, you guys, before we broke in, but it was inhaled. There was nothing left. It was gone in two days. I wish I was above the center of attention. If you guys are following me on Instagram, I shared these, I wanna say roughly a month ago. I first saw them on Emma and Jose's channel called Mukbangin. I will link it down below. She's a phenomenal cook. If you guys aren't into mukbangs or eating shows, 
she's still an amazing cook and she shares a lot of recipes before they do their mukbang. So I would highly recommend you check her out. I have made tortilla pizzas before you guys. This is not a new thing, but it's the way that she did it. So you can put whatever you'd like. I am chopping up some green peppers and onion. I like pepperoni, uh, bacon, all of the good things. The first thing to do here is you need to fry your tortilla. So the way they did it is they took their tortilla, threw it in the frying pan. When they flipped it, they started to build it and then put it in the oven from there. Now I have four people that I was trying to make pizzas for this night, so that just wasn't gonna work. So all I'm gonna do is go ahead and fry up my tortillas and put them on a baking sheet and build the pizzas from there. I will say this created such a perfect crispy tortilla crust. We can spend our day in bed I get the wine and the corkscrew You don't have to do one single thing You don't know how much I want you Just looking at you makes my whole world spin Like I said, you guys do you. These are your personal pizzas. I have shared this squeezing pizza sauce before. You guys always say you wish you could find it. It's a Primo brand. I think it might just be available around where I am. But for an authentic um, Italian pizza taste, for me anyway, I like a little bit of Parmesan and Italian seasoning right on top of that pizza sauce, you guys. And then build them as you like. I'm making two that are just pepperoni. And then I'm going to do a couple that are works, I guess, in a sense. I'm going to do uh, pepperoni, bacon onions and green peppers Mark Angelo pepperonis. I bought them in a grocery haul once and told you guys I'd let you know how they turned out. They're amazing. They're from Walmart and the pepperoni curl on this you guys you'll see when it comes out of the oven. Guys, I just cooked this in a super hot oven, like 425. Keep a really close eye on it just to get all your ingredients melding and crispy and caramelized. But I'm telling you, you need to try this method. Thank you, Emma. You're amazing. About a month or two ago, I saw my friend Kat over at Southern Farm and Kitchen make this baked sweet and sour chicken. Now, I don't think this is her exact recipe. I'll link her video down below, but this is one that I found on Pinterest. Guys, it's Catalina dressing, canned pineapple, onion soup mix, apricot preserves, and green peppers. I added the onion. I'm also gonna go ahead and cook up some rice in my Ninja Foodie. Of course, I will link the video down below showing you how to make the perfect pressure cooker rice. First up, we are gonna prep our veggies, and I'm also gonna go ahead and cut up all of my chicken.
you cut these, it's totally up to you. For me, I like them this size because then they're not gonna get annihilated in the oven. They don't cook the entire time with the chicken anyway. We're just gonna add those for the last 15 minutes. Now, I added an onion. I'm gonna suggest you don't. <laughs> I will say, I felt like something was just missing here. Like it wasn't sweet enough and I think the onion took away from the sweetness if I'm being honest. So the next thing we're gonna do is prep the sauce, which is one cup of apricot preserve, an entire bottle of either French or Catalina. I had Catalina, so that's what I used, and one package of onion soup mix. Stir that all together, add it to the chicken, and pour it in a nine by 13 pan. You guys, you bake this at 350 for 45 minutes. My personal opinion, I would do 40 next time. I feel like my chicken was a little bit overcooked. Let you down, let you down. Like I said, I will link my five reasons why you need a Ninja Foodie video down below. Guys, it is super, super basic. In like 12 minutes, you have perfect rice just like this. Now it does come out a little bit sticky, but that's kind of like how we like our rice here. I just said like, like 15 times, you guys, and I'm not redoing this part of the voiceover. <laughs> After the 40 minutes, pull it out, add in all of your fruits and vegetables, stir them in really well so they're incorporated and they'll cook in the oven, and then cook it for another 15 minutes. Let me just tell you, this is amazing. you guys we served it over top of rice you could make this a full-on Chinese food meal if you wanted but this was enough for us it's never ending you can give anything guys for the very last meal i was hesitant about sharing this with you guys because it was kind of a fail but not i just burnt them otherwise they were delicious i've made them before but i normally bake them so you can call them flautas or taquitos correct me if i'm wrong granted i'm from new brunswick canada so you know be kind in the comments i think a taquito is a corn tortilla and a flour tortilla is a flauta i don't know but first off i'm gonna go ahead and heat up some oil in my dutch oven that was my first mistake you guys because it always sticks like everything sticks to this thing it drives me crazy I have a deep fryer but I am mega lazy when it comes to whipping it out if I could go back in time I would have just gotten a frying pan and shallow fried them now 
All I'm doing is taking these small flour tortillas. I always keep this chicken. You can get this at Costco, you guys. It comes in a two pack. It's like $12 Canadian. It's an amazing price and it tastes delicious. It's a little big for me, so I like to chop it up and then I'm gonna throw it into a bowl. This is super basic, you guys. I'm telling you, this is like super quick craving kind of snack food stuff. I'm gonna throw some taco sauce in there. I'm gonna throw some of this uh, jalapeno heat Monterey Jack cheese from uh, Walmart in there. I end up adding a little more than what you're gonna see here. And I'm gonna throw in some salsa. I'm just kind of getting it to a consistency that I know I like to eat when I eat a flauta. Does that make sense? Recipes like this, you guys, are totally personal. And I'm gonna add a teeny tiny bit of taco seasoning just to give it that taco taste. And then you guys, we wrap them up and we seal it shut with a toothpick just so it doesn't open when we're frying. So right after this, we're gonna go ahead and move to the next step. Never felt tomorrow closing in this fast. Oh, I guess time's in a rush. Leaves are falling down, but at least they grow back. While I'm on a one way track. Now I know what it means to grow. I don't have anything to uh, measure the temperature of my oil because I'm stubborn and often when I'm frying I don't care but I walked away didn't pay attention I mean I didn't totally walk away I was emptying the dishwasher but you know how that goes anyway they were still really good the best part of these guys is making enough that I had some for the next day and I baked them in the oven topped them kind of like an enchilada I topped them with sauce and cheese the next day I would say they were even better you guys I am so glad that I took the time to do another What's For Dinner for you, share some of our favorite meals we've enjoyed in the last week, and stay tuned because I just want to keep sharing everything that I love with you guys, food, groceries, and mukbangs. I love you all, and I'll see you in my next video. Yeah, it is just enough to get by.